So, I'm actually putting off uh, releasing the Kazura drop video just because of this Melt buff. Melt literally got the buff everyone has been saying she needed from the get-go. Now, all of the other buffs leading towards this have been well appreciated and just makes her final buff just like that much better. And when I say final buff, I do mean final buff. I don't think Melt needs any more attention after this. I think she is a complete character and in comparison to her competition, she is far, far more fluid than any of them. Better than Seed and I, better than Bunyan, uh, Zet, a little different. Yeah, but that's is that different because of how she works i don't consider her a single target um even though technically she really is uh yeah so ignoring that the mecha ellies at mp5 skin naya mp1 and bunyan at mp1 as you can see melt blows them out the fucking water like not even close for damage wise like mp5 c9 is with the attack up that's what it takes to match melt's damage this and the effects on the mp everyone has been saying this since pretty much her early uh maybe not her release but it, definitely the last two years especially after her most recent buff so let's get started Base attack just above the midpoint. Good, good starting point. HP is it's a little lower. Don't worry too much about it. Melt is about like her survivability is making it so the enemy does not have any buffs whatsoever. If they want buffs, they need to waste an action every turn, and that's pretty much Melt's whole gameplay. She makes it so the enemy, if they want to do damage, they have to waste an action. If they want to stall her, they have to waste an action. They're, they're never going to be starting from a point of strength. Melt's just going to drain it every single time. So HP, it's low, but considering the enemy is not going to have damage buffs, her HP is technically uh, higher in practice. Uh, star weight, star gen, these are normal alter ego numbers. MP charge is super super healthy at 0.92 percent these quick cards are really really good her extra attack well above average her mp gain is great six hit mp to go with it and pretty decent attack it's not below where it should be so upstairs melt fantastic uh stuff like okita levels of um like strength upstairs and okita specifically uh saber okiton is one of like has some of the like most has some of the best fueling cards in the game like okita's okita's refund across pretty much all our iterations usually all feel really good and melt is like definitely up there with them she's lawful good so you can use that ce with her um nothing else really here uh all right so the first skill and the second most recent buff turn her two turn two time three turn dodge with 15 stars and they just gave it a battery uh cooldown stays the same and this is on a five turn cooldown this is at the point where they were basically giving everyone a battery and it really sucks when that is the only thing they do for a buff would and it, this is why people wanted like didn't want this buff first they wanted the mp buff how it is but at the same time melt if you weren't giving her um if you were giving her k-scope and you wanted to run her with black rail you literally were using two scotties in the first turn and if you didn't have cards you are going to have a problem getting back. Well, now you're only going to use one as long as you have mana loading. You're only going to use one Scotty 50%. And for uh, Cosro drop comps, 
kind of don't need excess battery because you're definitely going to be using Cosmo Drop with her um, in some capacity. Because Melt would really appreciate the defense down. Boy, would she appreciate that defense down. So, yeah, this skill is not super amazing, but this is a good skill. Second skill, it got upgraded from a basic attack. Yeah, and we're basically going reverse order for these buffs, by the way. Uh, it went from a basic attack buff, but it was still 30% attack buff. That had a slight demerit, but... A slight demerit on defense down means it's easier to, like, kill her. Luckily, like, Melt MPs stopped it from being too much of an issue by it not multiplying with any buffs they get the boss gave themselves but it, you don't want to mess around with giving attack buffs to the enemy or defense down buffs to yourself because they add up very very quickly so they buffed this skill and they made it so anytime you normal attack you increase your crit damage now modern versions of this skill usually require you to crit not melt melt all she has to do is face card and she gets free crit damage before she even does damage uh unfortunately this is only normal attack so her mp does not see the benefit of this but it does mean her extra attack will help the crit buff her extra attack can't crit but that definitely helps the stacks considering her mp does it. i I, I would rather get three stacks in one turn and be able to use my mp then get four stacks but not be able to use the mp is the mp is especially now melts bread and butter she wants to get as high gain as possible she wants to always be critting on her cards so their gains get better and because of how her overcharge works the higher mp2 and above the more you can actually hit 200 percent the better your further loops will be all right third skill this when it came out was obviously the biggest pain point for melt this i 100 percent agree this needed to get buffed before the mp i also agree that this skill needed to get buffed before the mp i do feel that because if her mp wasn't uh activating before damage uh she needed something and at the time they did not want to give her mp buff um that's the craziest part about this for the longest time they avoided giving melt an mp buff so i think the same can be said for um okitan uh alter ego there's a good chance that the next guda she's gonna get a buff and it's gonna be finally the mp and it's probably res down happens before damage just like um melt because again she had that same issue as well yeah so this skill in its original inception reduce mp damage for all enemies your whole party got less mp damage and then you got a delayed mp damage up 20 percent one turn after a turn so think ishtar's buff but shittier and that was this skill and if you were in a multi-core team you just fucked over your teammates for no goddamn reason so they had to buff this the defense uh mp damage down for one turn it's still there the enemy mp down it's still there at 50 percent and now the mp damage goes up to 30 percent and you have two turns of it instead of waiting for a delayed buff instant gratification would you prefer if this was um would you have preferred if this was three turns absolutely but at the same time the set the turn melt comes out the enemy probably isn't mp'ing so like this was a waste to begin with at the very least on the second turn that's where the enemy might have a break bar where they're actually mp'ing which would make more sense to pop this skill on turn two there's 50 percent mp damage down along with any uh attack debuffs or anything else that will multiply and make this damage nothing or you put defense buffs on yourself 
you start face taking MPs. Like after 50%, that's when you really see like MP damage hitting such low numbers that you can essentially face take. So could this be upgraded to three turns? Sure, but that's no, like people aren't gonna aren't gonna be looking forward to that for that. I think people are I think everyone is like expecting Melt is as good as she's gonna be and she's gonna become the gold standard and they're they're gonna have to spend time raising characters to Melt standard. Because even before this buff, characters were not on Melt's level. Melt was so far above uh sorry, I got rid of the upper damage. Melt was so far above her competition to begin with at 56,000 I like and I remember this clearly it was like 54 56,000 was her mp1 damage he was already at the top of the charts and then they buffed her mp to fix it which to be fair they didn't need to fix it its effects were annoying to say the least they weren't bad if all you were caring about was buff removal spam because if that was the case, melt like melt face guard would hit pretty goddamn hard. But Madras this B for uh, sorry, we're going through basket now. Madras this B for debuff re uh, resistance 17.5%. Riding B for an 8% quick buff. Nice. She doesn't have quick buffs hard buffs in her kit. So this just feels good. Sorry. Let's go. Ugh. Need to blow my nose after this recording. Independent action A, 10% crit damage. Nice. Goddess Essence uh, for a little tickle and another 22.5% debuff resistance. So her base debuff resistance is 40%. This actually is important because it means that Kazura Drop does not have a guaranteed uh, chance to land all her debuffs on Melt. She has a 90% chance, which is great. But there's still that 10% chance. Go characters with Goddess Essence plus Magic Resist are pretty much the only ones that don't immediately get debuffed to cause drop. You can hit most characters in the game. Unfortunately, it's the characters that she is supposed to be fighting that actually have, like, there's an actual reason she has the debuff success rate that she does. High Servant doesn't do anything in this game. It's only an, uh, an extra thing. Um, maybe it comes into play later, but this is the, it's not many servants and most of them are alter egos to begin with. Yeah, essentially this is an alter ego thing. Um, and it has to do with what makes a high servant. It's usually like they're combined with, uh, Spirit Origins, like with uh, someone else and a deity. Um, I believe Shisho would count as one. Uh, the extra version of Shisho, or at least the one that shows up in Extella. But um, again, I haven't finished Extella, so I'm not too familiar with all the lore for it. I have a good idea, just not fully familiar with it. Appends. Mana loading first to make her uh, teams just like easy, her startup easy. Um, the other alternative is you have Oberon up in the front, which is kind of just a bad idea because he might, he might end up dead sooner than you'd want. So mana loading, her own battery starts at 50, and then any Scotty battery is gonna get her up to 100 and get the train running. Would you like skill re reloading? Yes, yes she would. These would be on a four turn on base. Any kind of cooldown reduction and she's double popping her skills. She has really good uptime on, on her stuff if she has this. Her damage would be nice. Extra damage against Lancers. This is a throwaway. You are not bringing Melt to fight a Lancer unless somehow she's able to do at least neutral damage. Don't do it. Extra attack. If you have the extra coins to unlock this event, I would definitely recommend it. 
because this is a really good extra attack it's gonna net you a lot more damage especially at higher levels of melt uh i will always say from now on that if you plan on 120 a unit extra attack finesse is like an append you really want to look at because at 120 that's when extra attack boosts like this will show massive returns uh like if you have an unbuff extra attack and like you don't have a lot of attack buffs extra attack does about like 10 20 000 at most buffed up extra attacks with tons of attack buffs class advantage all that all the bells and whistles they go upwards of like a hundred thousand like assuming you get like the right kind of buffs which is pretty much attack buff um yeah like high attack and a decent attack buff is what really makes extra text shine uh, obviously defense down too there's like stuff that it an extra attack it's not a card unless you have an extra attack buff can't crit not mp damage power mods attack buff defense down pretty much the only way that affects it so yes melt doesn't get most of that stuff normally but power mods is something she can get from a support all right mp before its normal effect was remove buffs after damage your quick up was after damage now all this stuff activates first that's it and i will be saying this on record this is the exact buff everyone has been saying for two plus years you can go back to my videos in my older videos because i'm gonna stop taking them down now um like the older ones just because i'm at like a better point than when i started recording like i'm not embarrassed for some of my older recordings from that first year recording um but yeah like pretty much every video i made them melt i'm 99 percent sure that i said the only buff and melt needed was for these two to happen first because it completely changes their gameplay now you can't hide from melt dodge invul solemn they don't work on melt now she is i don't want to say she's on the level of usugi kenshin but now she has what makes usugi kenshin good except now she has ramp up like let me bring up uh let, let me bring her up Like, Uesugi Kenshin is part of the reason I feel she even got the MP buff in the first place. Because Uesugi Kenshin doesn't have ramp up, but does have a card buff that activates first, removes uh, one of these buffs, activates first, along with a super effective on an arts MP. When her base arts card gives her like 60% gain in the first place. Like, why the fuck? Would it make sense for Uesugi Kenshin to have an MP like this and Melt to have this when she refunds less than her as a card type that refunds less by nature? Just doesn't make sense. Melt getting this buff. Yes, she now far outclasses her competition. Even at like MP5, MP5 Seed and I does with her getting the attack buff does less than mp1 melt that is an actual crime and they need to buff seed mp or give her a serious skill buff if you, like if you're actually if it actually takes an rng buff for mp5 to come close to an mp1 It'd be different if we were talking about a welfare compared to a five star. We are talking about two different two five stars that are both single target. Yes, Seed and I is art, so it's easier for her to get all like all the bells and whistles and get more damage. But she literally does half the fucking damage. Like again, it'd be different if we were talking about a welfare four star, comparing it like 
to an MP15 uh MP15 star, but we're comparing an MP15 star to an MP15 star. Yeah. Literally does less than double damage. Uh does less than half damage. Does double this. Um it's not even 74,000. With this, yeah. No. She is at least more than more than half of Melt's MP damage, but it shouldn't get to this point. Matt's level, I love Alter Egos because it's just statues and pieces. It's no other mats. You don't have to worry about getting 40 foreign guard hearts for one skill or some bullshit. But you do need a lot of the gold mats for the last uh the last skills. Not a lot. Like nine dragon scales and nine emblems. Considering like what else you needed to max her out, like this is the bare minimum I would expect. Or they could have been dickheads and said 60 void dust. Wh which are you going to take? Nine of these or 60 void dust? I, I know my answer. On C, 20% quick, 30% crit damage, and 10% crit uh, down for the, the entire party. This is such a strong fucking pawn CE. I didn't even remember that it was this good. Different parts of the formula, your quick crits do like really good damage. This is essentially a mana burst level on a bond CE. Yeah, this is a mana burst of value for a quick crit. Uh, if you take like uh, Juna, his uh, mana burst that gives him buster up and MP damage. This is essentially the same thing except this is as long as Melt has this equipped. Well, Juna's is one turn. If you are watching this and you are on NA, Melt became one of the strongest picks you can pull off a of GSSR. Like, if you're able to snipe her off a banner, do it. Because she has great fucking supports. Because she's double quick, double buster. Kazura drop just came out. Um, Caster Scotty, she works with. Ruler Scotty, she works with. Pretty much pick a support and Melt probably works with them. She can be used with Vich. And again, if you have this uh, ready to go, like Vich, you can start, you can double stack these. There will be a turn you can double stack. Don't think you can double stack this, unfortunately. That's probably why this is a, this is gonna stay six turns and this is two turns. Because they probably don't want to actually give Melt like really, really strong buffs that you'd actually consider using bitch with her. But yeah, man attribute, bring bitch, and Melt will just decimate them. Because she does not have power mods and her crit ramp up is relatively speaking a little slow it takes her a full turn to like, truly get her crit buff like raring to go and like dealing out a lot of damage so this is melt if you have a chance to get her i would strongly consider her uh she is definitely one of the strongest dps's and 100 percent, i do not regret like wanting to try to get her to mp2 because now, before before this buff, I wanted to get MP2 for my melt on NA to actually um, get a pen, uh, get a different a pen than what I have on her. Uh, now it's, I'm going to get MP2 melt. There is no question. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get Uisuki Kenshin on main. Good chance I will. But melt, melt. Remember, she's an alternative to single target assassins, single target riders, and single target casters. Big thing on the single target casters. Not a lot of them are good. Uh, yeah, before I close out this video, I just want to like go through those top DPSs. Double their damage. Um... Yeah, so double their damage, 1.5 melts. 
This is, uh, let's go. Okay. So, re-recording this part, because this is the only problem I had, a little problem with the original recording. Um, yeah, so, Melt, in comparison to her, uh, competition, the most obvious one for most people would be Ozymandias, as he is, like, not only one of the best single targets in the game, or not only single target riders, but also one of the best in the game. Uh, if you double his damage and then 1.5 uh, melt damage, they actively do about the same damage. Now, Ozymandias has, he has ramp up of defense down, which really can't ignore, and he also suppresses the enemy uh, so they can't MP. So as long as you don't bring him to find an assassin, he should be like pretty good in almost every single challenge quest. Uh, Berserkers, yeah, no, Berserkers and Alter Egos would be the exception, too. Um, but, uh, again, we're, Ozzy has, uh, Melt has now that level of survivability that, and damage that we can compare her to Ozymandias. There isn't really anyone else here. Uh, certain, uh, hang on, this isn't, uh, oh, that's the wrong button. Yeah, certainly not single targets like Kerr, MP5, Kentucky, but no, no. Damage alone. Damage alone comes close with Kentucky. With all these characters. Pretty much all of them at MP5 is where you start seeing melt comparisons. Um, sorry, MP5 for these uh, four stars. Obviously, MP5, MP1 Melt isn't going to be doing more damage than MP5 5 Star. That's just not happening. But the thing is, her damage is so high that it's actually not even that far off, which is the crazy part. Uh, in terms of the casters, like, she doesn't really have competition. Uh, her biggest one is Ozuni Izumo no Okuni, and... She is one of the cases where you actually have to like really um, theory craft which quick support um, is really going to work with her because not only does she have crit up, she also has defense down, which does help with Kazuro drop. But if your enemy doesn't have defensive buffs, like once you hit 100% defense down, defense doesn't increase your damage anymore. So. Yeah, no, it, it's just going to be different now. And I think that's great. I think the fact that we have Kazura drop here to fill in like the huge gap that was left with quick support, because it's basically like if you weren't doing uh, quick car damage or buster crit damage, like all, all you were really doing was buffing up their MP damage. Kazura drop gives better refund, defense down, pretty much what the other Scotties were like really missing. Like again, Caster Scotty has one defense down, but like Kazura drop can like spam that shit. Um, yeah, but like in terms of like raw damage, like Okuni hit like without her mods, if she was to hit like a neutral enemy or no, not a neutral, an assassin, her base damage would be melt before we take class advantage into account now obviously if you have these mods mostly demonic story changes but even just demonic is not enough to like match melt so i would say like only against demonic assassins does okuni come even come close to uh how consistent melt is song and song different story because your black rail um buster farming or buster looping um yeah like sanzong is just like harder to like really count in this instance as like an act act uh actual comparison their setups are completely different uh yeah and then assassins Pretty much only if X is fighting a saber face. 
is the damage going to pat beat up Mel? Uh, oh, Jack. There is Jack if she hits female. And that is a very wide niche. So, it, like, Melt's best comparison for assassins really is Jack against females. Because, like, that's way more common than uh, MHX hitting a saber, a saber face. That is uh, cavalry class. All right. Just thought I'd uh, update this part of the video just because uh, I'm not going to work today. Um, and I felt like hammered down a little too hard how like good melt is like her direct comparison again uh heads in the clouds just because of um not feeling well but her direct comparison like mp wise is Uusugi kenshin and that's a far more spammable mp than melts so again i'm i'm glad melt got this buff she needed it um okay and there is there's no reason that melt can't have um removes buffs on mp if a character that can do the mp even better can just spam it all right peace thank you for making it to the end of this video if you enjoyed drop a like or sub hope to see you in the next one peace